came out of executive session and with all of you here, uh, I will restate why we went into executive session. We went into executive session. Our attorney was here to discuss a matter that was, that is attorney client privilege. And we have nothing to report out from that discussion. Um, so let me now ask whether there are just additions or changes to the agenda. No. Mark, additions, changes to the agenda? No. Okay, the warrants are circulating. Jeremy, thank you for bringing the word to Jeremy. Uh, we are moving on to the consent agenda. We have, we always optimistically put all of the minutes that we have, that we need for final approval. Um, and we've made it through in our review uh, through the October. October minutes. So, so we are everything else related to minutes is coming out of the so we're doing October 17th and 24th. And 20th, 10, 2017 20, and 24th. So we're doing the October minutes that are listed here yeah. and defer and removing from the consent agenda the November and December. They're posted, but they're not, we haven't, we like, haven't reviewed okay, them. Right, and then we are leaving in the $30,000 ARPA fund for traffic calming study, which was a substantive conversation on the 28th, but we didn't vote it. Right. So, so all right, so that is the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I move the consent agenda as. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Next item. Oh, yeah, supervisor. I think I might have printed that too. You got it somewhere. Okay. Um, I have a stack too. Uh, the Washington Unified Union School District has requested that we mail the WUSE ballots to registered voters at their expense, but from our town office site. That is not one of the ones that. Yeah. Oh, I did print it. They, yeah. Um, if you make a, we need to make a motion and we can discuss it. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make a motion. Okay, I move that the town of Callis um, mail the Washington Central Unified Union School District annual meeting balance to all active registered voters on the checklist. Yes. Okay, discussion, questions? So I have in front of me a one-page letter that came from Megan Roy, who is the new superintendent at Washington Central Unified School District. Apparently this is a routine thing, at least since the district has been unified. Um, any questions? Yeah, um, this, yeah, and this letter we received was from the um, Four Diaz, Four Diaz the of the Washington Central the Unified right. Union School District. Right. The letter had is Megan Roy. Okay. Right. Is there, a, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Do you want me to remind me? And you gotta remember, I'm taking notes, so you gotta go slow. Right. And, um, who seconded that, the motion that I made? I think we're Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark, okay. All right, so yes, yeah, so let's remember to slow down. Uh, the next item is, uh, a request um, from the East Callis Community Trust. This relates to the grants that the town is supporting and um, uh, hi. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, sure. Jeff. Oh, awesome. I was going to ask if we got what we needed to approve this, but you're but you're here. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, two recusals here. Yes. I'm recusing yes. myself from the discussion. I will answer questions, questions if necessary, but I, as a member of ECCT, and I doubt very much given the witness that I will need to. Okay. Wow. So, well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> so Denise and Mark, because of their involvement on the ECCT board, are recused. Jeff, do you want to you? introduce yourself for everyone? Sure. I'm, I'm Jeff Kinnetter. I'm a housing consultant, and I'm helping the East Dallas Community Trust with the redevelopment of the general store uh, in East Dallas. And I live on Gray Road, so in Palace, just right next to East Mount Uh So, hi neighbors. Um, so we're here tonight because uh, the town has applied for a grant uh, on behalf of the ECCT, and it was awarded uh, for 
of four hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars, and um, the town has received a draft plan agreement from the state. And myself and Liz Hurley, we had a consultant on the project that reviewed it, along with I think a copy went to Sharon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the town asked uh, that we pass a resolution accepting the grant. The grant has is about to be offered a check today and they said it would be out in the next day or two. So we have a resolution to accept the anticipated grant that will be forthcoming and to appoint uh, Mark Mahali um, as the person responsible for overall administration and uh, he will have the capable help of myself and Ms. Curry in that regard. And it means Sharon uh, and as the Chief Executive Officer to sign on behalf of the town for the screen. When, um, you, when you say uh, um, appoint Mark, that would be on behalf of ECCT. ECCT. All right. right. You guys said, yeah, I just want to make sure that we're clear. As the yeah. chair of ECCT right, right now. Right. It's in the resolution that was. So this is where, so the specific. Um, yeah, this resolution is <clears throat> that we, so the, the motion I'm looking for is, as Jeff outlined, that the board accept and agree to the terms and conditions of the grant agreement that Mark is named as the ECCT person with administrative responsibility for the grant <coughs> activities and the housekeeping that I'm going to sign on behalf of the board. That is. That is. Are you making that? Motion? I am not. I'm asking for the motion. John, this is where you say something. I'm sorry. So. I'm so moved. <laughs> is there a second? Here. <clears throat> a second. Okay. Uh, any other any questions while we have Jeff here? I do have one more item as well. Uh, we haven't yeah, voted this one yet. Let's vote this yeah. one. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, go ahead, Jeff. So in addition, there's, um, that was sent out to me was an administrative services and program management agreement. Mm -hmm. um, the grant, as you know, is going to go to the town, and yes, the town yes. passes it through with a sub-grant agreement to East Dallas Community Trust. Mm -hmm. and along with that pass-through comes all the requirements, the conditions, and regulations that are put on, on the town are passed through mm -hmm. to East Dallas Community Trust. Mm -hmm. So the contract that I've sent out for administrative services and program manager, management appoints the East House Community Trust as the administrator of this grant. Okay, I'm going to do my question. Good. When is that, is that, and that's that's consultants, myself and Liz Curry. And that's Mark okay. Mahali as well as point person for the, Correct. okay. I'll just say this contract is wonderful. It's got this long list of things that ECCT has to do and all the town has to do to be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have We're working to be on nice. that. We have to be nice too. Okay. Anything, anything you want to add on this before we make the motion, Jeff? Uh, I don't think so unless there are any questions. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the VCD, the Vermont Community Development Program contract for administrative services and the program management agreements what we have in our folders and I printed out this motion. So moved. I'll uh, second. I'll second. Any other questions for Jeff? Mark, I filled your name in as a person. Okay. I'll pass it to you to sign. Okay. And I will sign on behalf of the municipality. Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 No, John aye. needs to sign this. If you have a pen, Dated today. Yes. There's a line for the date. I did date. You can send me a copy. Yeah. Yeah. John, could you please sign this? Um, the only I don't know, Mark. We've talked about maybe changing a word or two on that. Well, well it's too late. Okay. Good to go. Just so you know, there's a technicality with this damn thing. It says has tendered. Well. They've approved it. It's working its way up to the final bureaucratic stage. It's probably on tomorrow. But I don't think. If they have a problem, let us know. We're meeting again next nice week. Mark. Okay. Yeah. I, I just don't think they can take care of You sign the document. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. We're, yeah, we're under construction, as you know. And, and Drive really cool. by. Pretty exciting. Yeah, it is really exciting. exciting. It's great. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Uh, we have a person now. Yes. No, yeah, that's you have to give it back to Denise. It's in the select board, though. Right, that's yeah, you need to make sure I have it back. Here. Yeah, let's do that. Is that just a pay? One pay? Yeah. Um, wait, for take second. a breath. Take a breath. Do you have everything you need on that? Yeah. And do you, you have, have pages one and two of that? Yes. Do you have pages one and two? No, you want, why don't you just give me the whole thing? Yeah, here it is. So I have one, the whole thing together. Two, three, and three. And you have three. And I have four, which is signed. All right. Um, okay. I don't want to rush you, please. Okay, thank you. I'm trying. I know you are. <laughs> okay. So, personnel update. We're on personnel update. So, um, we had um, interviewed an applicant for the treasurer and business manager. Um, we were considering an offer, and the person has found a different position to take. They thought that the drive here was too far. This is a different person than the other person that we offered it to. Um, so with that, I would like the board to think about reviewing and revisiting the current job description. I'd like to have Sharon and I talked about it. We would like to meet with Gina Jenkins, mm -hmm. town administrator in East Montpelier, to review the job, our job description, review what she does for the town of East Montpelier, and see what we can do. I mean, the hiring market is still. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but is a silver Subaru out a cross track with its inside lights on? And it was somebody was parked here earlier. Susan. <laughs> may not start again. You know, yeah, that's, right. that's Thank important. Thank you, Jeff. So that's, I would like us to revisit the job description um, and meet with Gina Jenkins and East Montpelier. So would the board authorize Sharon and I to do so? I, I'd like to comment on that. I want to comment, too. Go okay. ahead. Through the chair, would you like me to go first? Here you, go. you go first. I'll be sweet. Um, I think it's a great idea. The reason is, you remember several months ago, we had a public testimony, which I thought was very thoughtful in what we were discussing, how we were going to do things. Mm -hmm. And one of the suggestions that was made by several people was that we consider a town administrator. Mm -hmm. I think at the time, we thought about it, and I reported back, I remember in a meeting, that we really thought about it hard, and we just thought we were a little small for that, and that we, we wouldn't, just a little small. But I think that it's time to revisit that. And yeah. we think it, I mean, we were always open to it, we discussed it, we thought about it, we decided not to do it. Uh, but maybe we were wrong. And so I think that when you talk to others, kind of think, keep that in your mind. Are we too small, or is right. this right for us? Well, and we need to do some. We need to do some research on that. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, I mean, we've been advertising and advertising and advertising this position for I don't know six months. It seems like it feels like, and you know, we've had some interest. We've had interviews. We've offered the position three times. Three times. Yeah, three, three times. times. Mm -hmm. Well, no, four, four times. Four times. We haven't. Yeah, we didn't. We haven't made it all the way to offer. But we yeah. were. We were on yeah. that road for this last individual that we interviewed, um, who lives in Berlin, Vermont, and said the drive was too far. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, there are parts of Berlin where it is very far. Right. Um, so it's on the other kind of other side of Berlin. It's on the north Northfield line. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you know, and this is a hard time of year because people. You know, driving to Callis on the back roads in, you know, potential storms, even though we have said that part of the, part of the position can be done remotely, which opens up, you know, hopefully more opportunity for candidates to think about it, that they don't have to come in the office every single day. There are certain times when the person would have to come in. Um, but anyways, I think it's time for us to revisit. Yeah. So yeah, I I agree, and 
And we, we, we may be too small, but the fact is, um, we, we advertised for treasure for a while. That didn't work. We said, well, let's try something different, make it more interesting. We, we tried did that. that. We got a lot of applicants, but nothing has worked out. And so in the spirit of, well, okay, let's keep trying something different. I mean, we can't try something different every week because it, it takes time and bandwidth from us to revisit job descriptions and think about what does it look like. <coughs> But, and you'll see, we just re-upped the, um, the ad in, you'll see in seven days, I asked them to run it for another month. So we'll keep advertising for what we have, but at the same time, it, it's, yeah, it's worth, maybe the title, Town Administrator, will, will garner. We just don't want, no. We just, it'd be just going to try something different, so. Well, we, and we may be trying something different in three months too. And talking to folks that we interviewed and offered the position, they liked the idea that the treasurer was going to do something more than just treasurer duties. They really liked the idea that it was more diverse, there was new things to learn. You know, it opened up an opportunity for people to learn new things. And, uh, and several applicants made that comment that they really liked that piece of it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So we're gonna we're just gonna keep right. being. We're gonna keep moving on, moving on. Yep. Right. I don't know that um, John wanted to make a comment. John. John. Mm -hmm. want, I think we're ready to move on. Or are you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm moving on to something new. Yeah. Okay. So there's something I'd like to inform, at least officially inform the full select board of that I decided to resign my position on the select board effective at the end of this meeting. For those in the audience who may not know, I, I was elected last year to a two-year position. And so by my resigning now, I'd be resigning within the first year of my two-year position. I've spoke, spoken with sl the select board members individually um, about the prospect of my being appointed to fill out the rest of this, the remaining part of this, this half of my two-year term um, with an eye toward um, not leaving the select board in a lurch, but, um, and the, let me back up, the reason I, I would resign now rather than wait till a later date is to give the callous public plenty of time to think about <coughs> what they would want to run or they know someone who might want to run for my spot. Um, and so allow for that conversation and thought process to, to begin now rather than later. Um, so um, I'm asking the select board to consider uh, appointing me to fill out the rest of my term, the first half of my term. Um, but, right. uh, We'd have to do that, I think, at the next meeting so that we, so that we have time to warn it. We yep. don't have, do we have to warn it? Mm -hmm. I guess we do. We do all want to vote on it. Well, uh, unless, it can, unless it falls under something we already have on there. Well, it falls under appointing a public official. Um, well, I'll let Mark speak and then I will speak, I will speak to that. Right. First of all, I want to say, John, I really yeah, same here, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a and tremendous... I'm sure we'll continue to work yeah, together yeah. on stuff. I mean, John, yeah. you've done a tremendous amount of work for this town for so, so many years. Your service is yeah. above and beyond what anybody would expect a volunteer to do. Thank you, Denise. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. You and I have worked so together for a long time. Yeah, and I know you all mean that, too. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. Uh, I'm in the same position. Uh, I thought, I'd hoped that perhaps I could do both jobs, and I now know that I just don't have it in me. I just, I just can't do it. I can't personally do, I can't do it well. I can't do it right. I can't, I can't be, you know, a, a Vermont legislator and be on the select board. It's too hard. And so, I'm in exactly the same position. I want to give notice tonight and resign effective end of the evening uh, so I can participate in the activity tonight. But um, 
If the board wishes to reappoint me on an interim basis to serve through town meeting day when someone else will be elected, uh, that's great. It's up to the board. And I'm doing it now for the same reason, which is that it gives the clerk time to, what is it, in a few days you're going to send out an email, right? I mean, a front porch forum. Well, the deadline for candidates is, is in the middle of January. So right, so, so there will, we'll allow for time um, for people to right. decide if they want to run. They'll give notice, on it, and I wanted to, to do that. I wanted to give people notice, and Jeremy, I think the clerk will be sending out something on front porch forum. So are you resigning the fact at the end of this meeting? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and then it's up to you guys whether you want to reappoint me. Mm -hmm. uh, if you feel like you need to notice it and warn it and do it, we're meeting next week. So we're that we don't, gonna, so that we don't have to meet the day after Christmas. Yeah, we don't want to meet the day after Christmas, so we're meeting next week. And the only thing I'd say is do it at the beginning of the meetings if you want us to participate. Right, right. So, 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 Mark. Similarly, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so, so let me describe. Um, in case people have questions now or leave and have questions, because this is very nuanced stuff. So the cash 22 mm -hmm. is that there is no vacancy until a member, uh, uh, any elected official, has formally left. You can't announce a vacancy by giving two weeks notice or three months notice. The vacancy, because then you can change your mind. They've been elected. They can say, I'm thinking I'm going to quit, but then they can change their minds. So in order to create a vacancy, the resignation happens now. At the end of this meeting, there is a vacancy. Two, and that, two, vacancies. two vacancies. And that creates an awareness and an opportunity for people to run. Jeremy's going to be posting a list of what opportunities are available. But we are, we are assured that these are vacant positions because they have resigned executive tonight. Right. Um, at the same time, the select board is obligated to appoint somebody to fill a vacant position of an elected official forthwith. And so, <coughs> so what we, I, I, I similarly have spoken with each person and our, because Mark and John were elected by the public and they are willing to be appointed into the vacancy that they have just created to fill out the vacancy, the what feels very democratic to us is that we appoint them to fill their own vacancy so we avoid any bias of incumbency <coughs> we don't engage in a whole process that we would take a whole other chunk of time to invite candidates um, to fill that vacancy which an election can fill in march so a town meeting election that's the opportunity for an election to fill uh, to elect somebody to fill out Mark's seat, which is two more years, and to fill out John's seat, which is one more year. So I, I, we have warned an executive session um, for attorney-client privilege, personnel, appointment of or employment of a public officer or employee. We actually did a warn, warn that. So yeah, we did. We did warn that. So we will... Um, frankly, probably appoint them at the end of this meeting to fill their own vacancy again for the reasons that I just said, so that we are not creating a process that would be very time consuming um, when we are on the heels of an election anyway, and we will be appointing people that the town has already elected. Right. Okay. So, um, with all of that said, anything? You guys are awesome. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mark. Thank I you, Mark. can't. Is it clear to all you guys why we're doing that, that, that by appointing, reappointing us, that means they're just leaving it to the election to decide mm -hmm. rather than trying to appoint someone to get a leg up, you know, or something like that. Okay. That's the right. bias yeah. and incumbency, yeah. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you both yeah, very thank much. Thank you, Mark. Um, and then, um, okay, so let me. Anything else you want to talk about under personnel before we move to um, public no, comment? The, no, I don't think so. Uh, and I just, Jeremy's here, well, Jeremy's here. I wanted to get, just clarify my understanding. We had a conversation last meeting last week about <coughs> Saturday. 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 Yeah, meeting. budget workshop. Two so days that's ago. Week. That's this ago. week. It's all work. About it is. the functioning of the clerk's office 
and there was a lot of conversation about hours put in, hourly, and, and you know, I, I processed this and it became pretty clear to me that the town mm -hmm. clerk is an elected position. Just like the select board position is an elected position. You all voted, voted for the town clerk position, I assume. Um, thanks, Mark. I was going to lose that. Um, just like the governor on down to, I guess, the town clerk or in some towns at the town uh, constable, those folks are elected to fulfill a statutorily, statutory role. There's a set of job duties. If you can do those duties in 10 minutes, and then you've completed your job. If it takes you many more hours than you anticipated when you ran for the office, it still remains your obligation to fulfill what is prescribed in statute. It's not an hourly or an hour by hour job. It's an elected position, all elected positions across the country, as far as I understand, are task-oriented, are job description-oriented. They're framed in statute, and that's what you're agreeing to when you run for office, and that's what you commit to. Um, we're engaged in a conversation about what is appropriate compensation, that's separate. But I just want to make clear, it is not an hourly position. Now, the clerk hires his or her assistant. That is an hourly job. That's an, a, a position appointed by the clerk. That's their assistant. That's their person. And, and we allocate our budget uh, a dollar amount based on anticipated hours needed for that assistant clerk to fulfill the responsibilities that would be assigned by the clerk. Um, and that information is brought to us by the clerk during budget development time, which is right now. So I just wanted to clarify for folks who watched the video who were here on Saturday. That's how it works. It, the clerk's job is not a 32-hour job. It's not a 40-hour job. It's as many hours it takes to complete their responsibilities on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis. That's what it is. So in the case of Jeremy, if it takes him one week, 20 hours, I don't think it's ever that much, then for that week he's fulfilled his responsibilities. It's never that little. It's never that little, yeah. Um, but there are gonna be times where it's 60 and 80 hours. And I know uh, I've been on this board when Eva was a clerk, when Donna Fitch was a clerk, and when Judy was a clerk. And they were all, they all understood that that's what their role and responsibility. I just didn't want folks to be misunderstanding because I think there was some confusion in our conversation last Saturday. So, can I say one thing? Sure. Um, and then, uh, so it's a set, so we, it's an elected position. <clears throat> we set the salary. That's the way it works. And so we're setting salary for the position. We, we recommend right. in our budget, budget a salary amount. Right. And right. then the voters, the voters vote on that budget. Right. And if it's not by Australian ballot, they can amend it. Our budget can on be amended floor. on the floor. Right. That's up to you all if you so, show up for town meeting. And right. So what we need to do to fulfill our obligations to the voters is we need to look at what's the surrounding towns? What do they pay? And, of course, taking into account, are they like us? Are they different than us? Do we, you know, are there things that our clerk does that they don't, that we like, or vice versa? All of that we have to take into account. And we have to take into account market. And right now, the market... Which is a comparison. Which yeah, is a well, the, so, yeah, but you know, some of those surrounding towns may have had someone who was in the job for a long time. And, yeah. The question would be, what would they be paying if they had to hire someone now? And that's hard. One of the things that, just as a general matter, it, I'm sure it's no news to any of you, the market, we just heard, it. I mean, the market for them, it sucks. I mean, it's very hard to find good people, and there's not enough of them. But this is tied to market, the SMR, yeah. but, and it's also not. It's an elected position. Right. It's like saying, what's the market for governors? Right. All you I'm know. saying is, is that when we look at that, we would look at, I think the proper measure is, what's the right salary for that position given everything? 
Right. And yes. yes. Given the so, given the surrounding right. towns and given where we are. Again, that's well, and, and really, market your your market informs. You get informed by the market, a, a particularly push comes to shove when you can't find any candidate for the position. That's where the market informs you what it, right. what the market is. All right. So um, I want to move on. To, are we done under personnel? Well, I just want to and also clarify. Um, What's, what other towns are currently paying, it's just like what we're currently paying. It's kind of retrospective. We would be better informed by checking in with other select boards and what are they considering? Yeah, right. And what, are, what do they think their clerk's uh, salary needs, if you will, will be going forward, uh, yeah. you know, given the, the economy and everything else. So, so I think we'll, yeah, be, we'll be doing that and considering right. there's the, a lot to consider. The request right. but, made but thank you, but um, thank you. If I get appointed, we'll <laughs> we <be considering>. are. <laughs> but we, we will have more. We will have more That's budget right. meetings where we get to talk more about okay. these things. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, we have. We had. We are running way behind. We are 15 minutes behind. We had 15 minutes warned for public comment. Given that we are 15 minutes behind, I am going to work very hard to keep public comment in the 15 minutes. And you all know that what that means. Nothing personal, but I will be encouraging you to hurry. With a smile on my face, uh, if I remember, if Mark, if Mark, uh, if, I, if I remember the smile, I said, please hurry. So, can you guys raise your hands and let me know how many people want to speak in public comment? Just a couple, really? Okay, sure. great. Somebody come forward. Somebody come okay. forward. Yeah, and tell me your name, please, and come forward. I don't know. My name is Mimi Gus. <coughs> I'm the clerk for the East Dallas Fire District. Hi, I'm just coming to amend our our, our funding request. Um, we. Uh, Submitted in July of last year ahead of the deadline, and it's not clear to me whether we were asking for part of that first year grant or the total. Um, but now I can see that it's being it's the total. It's the the total. total, right? So um, I'm requesting an increase to sixty thousand. What was it before me? Thirty. Thirty. Okay, so we're requesting yeah. to double. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, you said the best thing is to come in person show. Yeah, tell you. That's great. That's what I did. I also have a letter. Okay, and then you have something to write and add to the <laughs> and it's, yeah, yeah. The second page is a copy of the first request that you okay. sent in writing, just so that you have it all. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank point you. out that, that the, uh, the, Curt the dam, Curtis Pond, is really important and it affects everybody in town. And the CD fiber also affects everybody in town, but it particularly does not affect East Calis Village. Yeah. CD fiber? Right, because they already have most it. of the village is <laughs> considered served, right? It's not underserved. Right. Right. right, so they won't be getting it. Yeah. Right, so as you think about the fact that, oh, well, you guys want 60, well, so the 200 kind of goes to the rest of the town <laughs> and not to us. So, um, do you, have a, you, you don't have an estimate of what it's going to, what you're going to be doing. Soon, we are supposed to get an estimate from the engineer. Uh, last time, you know, we were going to be bonding for 250, mm -hmm. and I hope this comes in less than that. But um, we yeah. only have a base. Of and this is for repairs. House. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is, uh, yeah, to say out loud what the project that the request is, what the so project we is. have a we have a disinfection okay um, project. The state requires us to do certain things so, to improve right. our our system up there, and it will include uh, expanding our so the reservoir wait a capacity. So the disinfection, I'm just trying to do just it. Okay. Okay. It's okay. on the page, so okay. okay, so the disinfection project is required by the state? Mm-hmm, mm hmm Because we have excellent water, and yet we still have to have a standby That's coordinator right. that yeah. functions. That's EPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, EPA makes, and you know, get on the base to do mm -hmm. these things, yeah. So, um, Dis disinfection, expand our reservoir capacity, develop uh, another source, hopefully, to make us more drought resistant in the uh, future. Mm -hmm. And it would open up, the, it would then be possible probably to expand the number of hookups. Right now, they will not allow us to expand our hookups huh. because of uh, oh. the size of our reservoir. Mm -hmm. Right, because right, I know when last couple of years when we had droughts, there's been 
the kind of question of what, right? Right. Yeah, just having a bigger reservoir would make a big difference for that. Reservoir means a tank. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks for volunteering and doing it. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, it's important. It's important. I have some questions that you don't have to answer right now, but I'm sort of wondering how you're going to decide or how this is going to go. Our plan is that for town related projects like the CV fiber, help paying for cuts. To do some work, the causes, I don't know what COTTS. Oh, that too. Uh -huh. From for the town <laughs> office, I can't remember. Um, things like that, the board is deciding on how to spend that. But anything outside of a town related project, we're going to put it on the list in the town report, like we do the social services. So here's a slate mm -hmm. of items, yep. and then yep. during town meeting, people can kind of. Yep. Nick, I mean? We haven't worked out that detail. Yeah, we haven't worked that out. We have to figure out where we're going. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the plan is to, to, to have the townspeople have input into how the rest of the money is spent. Right. Yeah. So this goes on the list. Mm -hmm. It's already on. It's the already, list. On, it's already the list. on the yeah, list, but I just have to update the list for right. this new amount. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you, Reed. Thanks, Reed. Is the town board going to have an any kind of explanation that follows what that? Why the request has gone up? Yeah, mm -hmm. we can well, do it on the floor too. We can do it on the floor. I plan to write something up for the select board report about our plan. And about that, about what do you mean about the water district? I'm just wondering. Public community anything? water supply that is serving yeah. the village of the town, so it's really important. Yeah, maybe I'll priority. maybe I'll contact Rini about. Yeah, that. Rini, right Rini, up. actually, why don't we? Why don't you? Could you write a little paragraph of what it's for? Yeah. And it's probably in the letter. That's probably what you're going to tell us. Right. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. I'm Daniel Keeney. I'm one Hi, of the Daniel. college oh, representatives to nice the to meet uh, you in school person. board. Yeah. Oh. Um, hi, Daniel. And hi. Um, I'm sorry. I'm one of the Dallas representatives to the uh, Washington Central Unified Union School District Board. Oh, yeah. Can you say that like five times fast? <laughs> no. <laughs> and you're also involved in the swim, swim committee. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not prepped or briefed That's to talk okay. about this. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I, I don't want to be tedious. But um, so Rosie LeCare, our our district uh, clerk, was here earlier. She oh, had to leave, um, but she did actually want to just um, make a slight language change to the proposal which you passed earlier, which was. And I'll defer to you whether that actually. We didn't actually, pass anything. No, we, we didn't. didn't. You passed a resolution, or you made you we passed a motion to. Right, but we didn't, yeah, we went with the language because we didn't have. Right, new right, language. so she's suggesting it. Needs I'm to just, be amended. yeah, there, there was a slight distinction she wanted to make, which was to avoid the eventuality of having a bunch of returned ballots that had to be kept in a vault that is too small in her office. She basically just wants ballots sent out to active, unchallenged. And uh, registered voters, rather than all, all registered voters. Who made the motion? I did. And I'm a seconder. Do you accept the? Uh, the yeah. Can you say the? Yeah. Can you say the um, what what it is? The ballots be sent to all active, unchallenged, unchallenged registered. registered voters. Is that going to make a big difference? As opposed she, to, she, she thinks district wide, it's going to make a very large difference okay. in in terms of the number of ballots she has to Can hold. For an extended period of time in her vault. To is. active, unchallenged registered voters. Jeremy, you want to just, you're nodding your head, you want to be. That's a good idea. Well, what it, okay. what it does is that it, it won't require us to send ballots to folks who are challenged, many of whom have moved out of town, um, not responded to challenge letters, um, folks that, and so unless. I can't purge somebody off the list, off of the voter checklist. If we know that they've moved out of town, I still have to get that individual to actually sign a form that allows me to purge them. So right now I think we have maybe like 150 people who are on the challenge list. Um, so for instance, so, so that's, so it's basically it means 150 uh, ballots that won't go out and just get returned to, to my office or <laughs> so and, and so then that would cost you know, 
is staying on postage. It well, but are we allowed no, you're to? Not, it's not at your cost. It's at the school. It's school right, well, I mean, the school. Yeah. Are we allowed? Right, are we allowed to do that? No, under one, no one who's challenged got a ballot mailed from the Secretary of State for either the primary or the November general in this okay. last election. Okay, so this it's is just the standard a, practice. It's, it's okay. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. So and I think that language was not included in the letter that was sent was, to you. Was, okay. No, it wasn't. And we wasn't. apologize for that. It was sort of a late addition. Yeah. Sure. I also good. speak under correction, but I think they can still vote in person, those challenge they, people. Yeah, sure. I, I had cops challenge people to show up. They signed an affidavit. I still live in town. Great. Yeah. Done. Here's your ballot. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Denise, Excuse are you making a um, motion to amend your motion or whatever? Yes, I did. Mark, Mark is oh, sorry. Sorry. All right. Uh, any other questions for Daniel? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank okay. you. Thank sure. you. Oh, why don't We're we vote to three rescind? for three now. Yeah, we have two times to vote? go. Oh, we just, wow. So is there a motion to rescind the earlier vote? Um, I know we amended. We amended it. We amended, we amended it. the earlier vote. Right. We just okay. amended the earlier vote. Okay. And did everybody vote in favor? Yes. yes. We all did. We just said we did. Rick is just very quiet. Right? Yeah, yeah. Denise is right, so busy to... taking good minutes that you didn't hear us. Well, they're not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to be like they used to be. Sorry, I'm going to the waters. No, it's okay. That's we're okay. just we're trying to get it straight. So we we amended our earlier vote. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for volunteering. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you awesome both. Okay. Um, I am going to recuse myself for the next item. Oh, yes, yeah. Chair. And Mr. Chair, Mr. Yeah. Vice Chair, I'll ask you to take over. And you're recusing because you don't like Drew? And you don't want to she doesn't, No, she doesn't like maple syrup. I, I, oh. I, I'm recusing because I have done legal work for Drew, which makes him a client. And just, oh. just, so if we pick apart the agreement, it's because you no, made it. I wondered. I've recused, I've recused myself fully. <laughs> fully, fully. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm Vice Chair. I don't see you work on this one. I didn't know, but you're still, you know. Yeah. Drew, come on, come on up and join us. Okay. So the item before us is a is a rule, a three-year renewal of a three -year, prior three years. Yes, it's, it's a revised agreement um, between the town and Lamb Sugar Works. So we did this a few years ago, I guess it was in Years ago, right? It's five. Was it five? Yeah. So I, I think it still has my initials up top. Yeah. Like my so edit. the as I understand it, the contract that we are being asked to uh, approve and sign is identical to the prior contract, except number one, the dates have changed, and number right. two, there were some hours of operation. Right. Uh, uh, there's a lot in the contract, but it's one of those wordy lawyer contracts. Yeah, right. But uh, the we know how you hours of that. operation were specified in the prior contract, and as I understand it, they're generally accurate, but not totally accurate. That's and correct. So your yeah. proposal is that those be struck. And is there any other change? No, that was it, just the dates. Yeah, and you said that you had, we haven't heard any complaints from anybody about the hours of operation and parking because you kind of have to park on Pekin mm -hmm. because your tank is up on the hill there. Yeah, right at the bottom of Singleton there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do have a question. There is a typo I just fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay. My question is how many, about how many taps on, on town land are there? <sighs> is it I would say probably around 100. <clears throat> but it's, it's really hard to say because the town the boundary between our land and town land is not properly surveyed, and um, so it's it's kind of we don't really Squishy. know exactly where. If if the boundary were further up the hill on our land, then there would be more taps on town land, and so, yeah. so you just don't. Really but it's all on that side, side of the hill, and the gravity feeds well. Right. So John, so. where did you find a typo? Oh, I just put the word of. It's in the document. Oh, you just signed. It doesn't matter. Just yeah. sign it. Um, in so, is there are there any other questions or comments? I guess. Do you want a motion? Wait, um, where? So, I want to ask what what were the hours of operation that changes? They what, were pretty that? early in the morning. They were early, and they still are. Um, mm -hmm. But 
it just we found that depending on road conditions and sap haul and exactly what our schedule is that sometimes we're just there after we had initially expected to be there or when oh, the sap, or when the yeah. sap yeah. runs yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're always out in the morning collecting sap, but depending on the size of the run, sometimes we have to go out for a second run. That's usually what the trouble is, but it also depends on things that are not very interesting, like which tanks have the most. Sometimes we will collect one tank before another tank, which means we get the town tank later. It's just, it's all just kind of a scheduling thing, depending on amounts of sap and where they are because we collect from four different tanks. Am I right? Am I that I wasn't here when we did the, the first one. In some ways am I am I right in characterizing this to myself as this is something where the the company has to go across our property mm -hmm. right. in order to get where they need to get. And in return for a small license fee, they're gonna they're going to tap our property and use our property, which we wouldn't really be able to do otherwise. Right. In other words, it's not like this is some sort of big piece of land where we there's a huge possibility for making lots of money by tapping it and we should bid it out or something like this. This right. is a situation where the guy's crossing our land and we're saying in return for a small license fee, tap it. Well, we don't even charge a fee. It's, it's in there. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's 200, 200 bucks. bucks. Oh, was it? I forgot about that. Yeah. Did you pay? <laughs> I paid every year. <laughs> it's really, though, I'd just add that it's, it's really about the tank placement much more than the taps. Um, we well, can't... yeah, because you said, I remember you explained it before, it was easier <clears throat> access. Yeah. We, we have, um, before we had the tank on town land, we had to collect all the sap that was in that, those parts of our woods with tractor and trailer, which is difficult. And as we've grown, we've moved to basically truck <coughs> collection and transport back to our sugar house, which is on the top of Jack Hill. We aren't the least lucky person that has all the tap. Taps come down to a nice sugar, sugar house that's in the bottom of a hollow. So we're on top, so we collect it all by truck. And when we started um, kind of going with that system, um, it you know, was much more logical to have a tank down on Pekin Brook, right. which is on, on town land. So it was really about tank placement. And that's why we, we refer to it as the, as the tank lease, right. rather than, that's what uh, and if it was you know, the prerogative of the town, and we talked about this back then, to not tap trees on town land, though we're not exactly sure where those trees are, because of the boundary issue, then we'd be happy with that. It's not really about the taps for us, it's about okay. the tanks. Yeah, it's about the collection. Yeah. yeah. So and the, at the time, uh, you know, one of the big issues was, um, not that it was a big issue, but one of the considerations that the town, the select board has was with traffic on the road, parking the truck, um, and that's that's been a non-issue, and um, and you and we said you have to put up cones. We got right. cones right. and some more. It's all there in the contract. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, do we have a motion? Yeah, yeah, I made a motion, and then you asked a question. I don't know. If uh, uh, so I'll second your motion. So we have a motion to approve the contract. Any final questions, comments? A motion to approve the contract as revised. As revised. Yeah. Well, it's it's mm -hmm. the contract. <coughs> That's it's a new contract. It's presented. It's right. a new contract. It's not an extension of the old contract. It's a new contract. Right. Yeah. Uh, Can I give, I do have one quick question, please. and this is probably not a non-issue, but something I've seen before is sometimes, you know, if you've got, you, you have time, you know, I get, I get nervous sometimes about overtaxing on trees. I've mm -hmm. seen that where sure. people don't own land, mm -hmm. and I've seen five, even six taps on it, yeah. and you know, so it, yeah, it's it's also in the in the lease contract that we tap according to regulations good, okay. established by the state of Vermont. So yeah, we're we're very conservative with that. That's very good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Any other comments, questions? No. Uh -uh. Is there anyone who wants to testify on this matter? It's really good, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record reflect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank we, you have, uh, we have a motion. All right, those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.
The motion passes. Okay, I'll pass this. I'll pass this around guys. the sign. Thanks, I just added the date. Thanks for your service. Through. Um, I just added the date that we're signing this, and if you could okay. sign it tonight and give it back to me. Can we just do that right now? Yeah. And left the record. <clears throat> Next to recusal. Yeah, yeah, she will. Madam Chair, I turn it back to you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Lance. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Okay. We are on to the Jeremy. Grace period. Grace period. Jeremy, can you send that back to John and Mark? Yeah. Jeremy, we're ready for you. So the, uh, the, the item is uh, a change to the property tax rate period. Hello. 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 Nice to see you again. Likewise. Good to be seen. Long time no see. Jeremy, town clerk. Um, so what this is was um, just some pressures that we've seen in the office relating to uh, what we've had in the warning for a number of years. I think this was something that started on the floor um, and just became enshrined in the warning. Um, but from last year's warning, what I'm looking at is Article 13, which talks about a postmark. So postmark being to take it to the post office, they put the date on it, goes through the mail so you know when it was mailed um, as being a measure of if it's postmarked and the deadline's the 15th and it's postmarked on the 15th and you get it the following week, you're on time, no problem. Um, there's a tension between that and Article 15, which is a seven day grace period. What ends up happening and what we've seen is that um, it creates a situation where there's some uncertainty about when the actual deadline is. Is, 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 the, is the, I'm sorry, I didn't bring it with me, is the Article 15 with the seven day grace period, is that also a postmark? Nope, well that's, this is part of the right, it doesn't reference it, but okay. both yeah, no, our no. prior legal team and our current legal team uh, read that as to allow for um, the grace period for both of the installments, including yep. postmark. Okay. So we so have you, a situation you, where you, you might, postmark. it might be, two weeks after the grace period has ended and we're still getting postmarked. Did, because did, did we change the wording from... I know, because I feel like, it used, I feel like we've processed this question. Always been postmarked. But whatever it is, it doesn't say it, but the practice is that you apply that postmark right. concept from Article 13 for the actual deadline to the grace period. So for instance, if yes, so it's applied to the grace period, it kind of creates an additional week of grace period. Right. Oh, I see. And it also creates, like we had in this year, um, it, it just kind of lengthens the tax collection process, mm -hmm. which would be nice to, to. So I guess what I'm saying, you know, in terms of, well, for so for the last day on the 22nd, we had $109,000 walk through the door. The way Thank you. Of the, of the of the grace period. Excuse me. You mean you had 109,000 which came in. Into Post the office. Postmarked on the last day. Walked in the, no, walked in. It literally walked in, yeah. not, not in the mailbag. Yeah. So as long as we're receiving postmark, we, to some extent, we accept people walking in because that's still, that's kind of been the practice of the office. All right, so, so I'm trying to get it clear in my brain. So the postmark, if somebody mails it and it's postmarked, is accepted if somebody walks in the office and hands you the check. If it's within that period, it's accepted. But hang on, I no, think, no, what, no. I think what Jeremy's can, let's let's make up some. He's saying yes. no, but let's but it's but let's. I I I think from the conversation you and I had, it's more nuanced than that. Right. That if the deadline and I'm going to make updates. If the deadline is September fifteenth, and for like the real deadline for taxes. And then that's the beginning of a seven day grace period. Um, after, so by the 22nd, if you get it postmarked by the 22nd, then you're still fine. You're fine. You're not on time, but you're fine. You're not gonna get penalized. Right. Um, and what, 
what you explained to me on the phone is as a practical matter because a piece of mail postmarked on the 22nd may not reach the office until the 30th. And so that whole period, or later, that whole sense period sense. where mail where postmark on 22nd are still arriving in the mail, as a practical matter, you can still walk in, even and they will accept it without penalizing because um, if a piece of mail can arrive today and not be penalized, right, then so a person was... walking in can. And I don't understand. That's that. kind of what I was. Saying. I don't understand that. Why would it's not? That? It's not people walking in. It just it it, it lengthens the collection. But so the grace yeah, period. So it basically it's creating a situation where um, it's lengthening the collection process by several weeks. By several weeks. Um, number one and number two. I think that there's a fairness issue. There's a lot of people who work really hard to scrape up their taxes and get them in on the fifteenth. Um, Postmark on the fifteenth. Yeah, or just in person. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if I mail my check on the fifteenth from Seattle, I basically it might not come to the twenty eighth or the thirtieth. Um, and so. And I in in discussing this, um, so it just it creates. But that's something that's available to every single taxpayer. It creates un it creates uncertainty. Okay. Um, it lengthens the season, the tax season itself. Um, and in talking with our legal, um, their experience was that it's most communities do one or the other. And they and Jim agreed. What are the other yeah, what are the other either ones? a postmark or a grace period. Uh, but to I do see. both is kind of like it's. I <coughs> which do you prefer? Um, I, mean, you I, I would stick with postmark personally. I think that that's fair. Um, and concrete. <laughs> and concrete, it creates a specific day that you need to get that thing. If you can't get to the office, you need to get to the to the post office. Um, and so, like, for instance, there was a situation where um, on the 15th, so even in our minutes, not in our minutes, in our warning, it has a by 4 p.m. Um, to the office. Mm -hmm. um, this person rolled in at 4.22. We were still there. We accepted their payment. Um, but then the following Monday, there were payments coming in that were accepted because they were postmarked. So postmark, it's just, yeah. it's just, it's kind of confusing and it, it feels like it would be better um, just for the certainty and also just to try to shorten the tax collection season and just make it clear. We get people calling the office, when's the due date? It's the 15th. When's the real due date? The that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's the fifteenth. Yeah. There's a grace period. Yeah. There's like a nuance yeah. there that yeah. um, would be useful. And so, just from talking with Joe, um, our attorney, he said that yeah, most communities do either postmark or grace period. Typically, it's grace period, or typically it's postmark. Um, and that would be his suggestion as well. Is if you're going to do one or the other, to do the postmark. Um, and then it's, you know, male's male, but typically there's, I, I just feel like, because there's a tension kind of between the two, because in Article 13 it references postmark mm -hmm. um, before the due date set in Article 12, which are the due dates. So then you have that, but then you have the grace period yeah, that extends yeah. it. it just, it's just a little wonky. So and we were talking about language, and he just said, why don't you just propose to j just one or the other, and we could... X out article of uh, the, the grace period piece and just do postmark or what I'm kind of agnostic out, but X out not not, not put that on the morning. X out 15. Yeah, just not have fifteen on the morning. So eliminate the grace period. So that would be my suggestion. I think it would it would it's decrease crazy. uncertainty and it would shorten collections and kind of mm -hmm. still provide a period of time for people um, to get their their payments in and you, you'd be prepared to defend that on the floor if somebody comes up and says, well, I like the way it was and select boards removing that or proposing that it be removed. Well, we just wouldn't put it on the morning. It, right? No, no, someone could amend it right. from the floor. Right. So yeah. it would be good if Jeremy right. could explain how he did to us, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, people, Jeremy, will think 
well, wait, I like a grace period. Grace period sounds nice. It sounds more, it sounds more for friendly and warm it, and all that. Well, and it came from the floor. It yeah. came from right. the floor right. originally. Originally. Right. You know who else really like it? The treasurer that we ultimately yeah. hired. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, it just makes it. I mean, I'm. Or one or the other. If people like the grace period, have it in hand. The language is in hand. It's in my hands. You have the one week. It's it's. However, you get it. Whether Both is and, yes. then, and then you run the uncertainty that you postmarked it two weeks ahead of time and it somehow still didn't arrive. I'm not aware of any other towns that do both. Most right. most towns either have none of those and actually have much higher um, penalties. We have extremely low penalties, some of the lowest right. in the that's state. A, that's another so I think that's another factor to kind of consider. Many towns have eight percent or more of a of a late penalty. Um, and I'm, we only charge 0.5 of a percent right. in, I remember that in fees. Been, that um, came from the that, floor that as well. The so floor as well. We, we, are, we are extremely generous with the taxpayers, and I think that this is a simple fix that just feels more fair to me and would really right. help improve um, just the flow of tax season, which can be quite hectic right. for many, once the tax bills go out. Um, and now we're in delinquent tax season, so we're getting lots of calls. Um, the you know letters are out, and yeah. we'll start getting an influx of people asking why am I late and what what is this and um, so it's you know it, it'll just I think it'll be to me it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Some people. I have a question. Go ahead. First of all, you had someone in the audience who. Had well, but Mark, yeah. you, you said we're going to go through the board first. Okay. You said you have a question. Great, okay. Um, do you happen to know, as you know, we had a little bit of drama in my family over this. Uh, do, do you know whether when you go to the East Callis Post Office, for example, and it's for Callis, and you drop it in the Callis box, do they postmark? Not always. And that's one of the situations where you have to specifically, I wasn't aware of this until this year as well, but so yeah, if something comes in through the mail and it has not been postmarked, the office is really under no obligation to accept that based sure. on our warning. But why right. don't they postmark? Uh, if it's local, so it doesn't always, it just, it's sometimes just it doesn't, sometimes it's maybe there's two pieces of mail I got, I don't know, I'm not a mail worker, right. but it happens. I mean, did you ask why? Did um, anybody ask, Mark, did you ask why they don't? Well, it was Chris. Uh, why they didn't postmark things? They, in our case, they... I think it was just like it, the end of the day. It was a choice between, green. do I send it to Burlington? Yeah, and they'll postmark it. And I think which, or do I just slip it right. in the mailbox? And yeah. I think everything goes in the mailbox. And, yeah, and, she, and she, uh, I can't, it, frankly, I can't remember which way she went, but she... She thought, oh God, if I send it to Burlington, it'll be, take forever, and if I just put it in the box, it'll get there sooner, but of course it wouldn't be postmarked. Huh. I got mail from you it happened, the, apparently. the other day that wasn't postmarked, yeah. which is yeah, well, perhaps... Which is, I've it, driven, but the, but the I've stamp was canceled. Right. The, yeah, yeah, they got yeah, that they got money piece, like, but... Yeah, no, so I, I don't have a Burlington with my federal taxes so that'd be on time. Okay, so, so I get that. I, 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 just, I don't want to make difficulty here, yeah. but I just want to raise an issue with you guys. Well, that's. Would it be easier, both in terms of not peering to up the grace period and not having to deal with this do they stamp it or don't they stamp it problem, just to say we leave the grace period and it ends not when it's postmarked but when it's received? Which would be in hand? That would be in hand. In other words, the other. But, what if, but then what Boy, if. Boy, that's asking for Jeremy to get really. Right. I mean, not my fault. The post office. It normally takes. Oh. Well, I, think I could see that leading to a bunch of abatement. Well, I think. Okay. I don't know about abatement, but I know it'll just, it'll be a parade of people coming in all day. Well, but so I think. Okay. Uh, you know. It's, we have to. I think we just have to pick one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, the federal government uses postmarks. Well, no, I, I think we, that's consistent. One, just right. the other one. Yeah. Right. 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 Like that, okay. Well, postmarks are. I mean, that's kind of universal postmark. Yeah. People know what that means. Also, I think we could ask the post people to please postmark them. You well, you got to walk in. Yeah. You know, you I know if it's critical, I always go in and make sure they stamp it. I was just kidding about that. <laughs> well, and the same can be said if, if it's dropped off in the box. <laughs> There's no 
there's no. That's right. Know, if we can put it. If in someone office. drops it in the box over the weekend, we don't receive it until we receive it. So the postmark kind of. Right. Gives I mean, if it's safe. A set due, time. If it's yeah. due and somebody puts it in the box and you don't get it until after the due date, mm -hmm. so you still accept it, right? I just want to crystallize the con what I'm hearing as consensus. That I mean, there's a lot of little questions we're asking, but I'm. Donna had a question. Too. I know. I just want to articulate the consensus, I think. But that's what I want to test because we want to make sure we're all on the same page while Jeremy's here. So I think what we're what we're hearing, I'm hearing two things. One is um, an inclination to make a change. And the one thing we haven't talked about is how many years has it been that people have been trained that there is a grace period, and uh, what does this change look like? And Jeremy, you might put some thought into, um, you know, how we make sure people are fully, 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 fully aware that there's no more grace period if we go in this direction. Um, and then, so the one, one point number one is I'm hearing kind of an inclination to, and acknowledgement <coughs> of the point, and maybe some. And, and willingness to maybe take this I, the grace period off the ballot, which means off the warning. Off the warning that we are by if we say we're taking the grace period off, then we are also, and this is consistent with what we're saying, what I've been hearing, going with a you get the you get your taxes into the office by four p.m. on the date that they are due, which is the only date there is to talk about. It is the real date. <laughs> there is only one date. The date, or they are postmarked by that date, Correct. and that's it. Super clean. Yeah. Right. Yep. That kind of where yeah. we, we all are there. That's what I'm hearing. Um, okay. So if that's kind of our general consensus, that makes it clear for people that the board heard a proposal and we are inclined to go along with it, because we don't formally vote yes or no. We prepare a warning, but this by this would be an absence of on the warning. No, we have to approve and sign the warning. Sure, but it's an absence of a thing right. that right. used to be on That's the warning. True. We're mm -hmm. not saying, we're not warning an item that says we're not doing a grace period anymore. We are just not warning a grace right. period. Right, it's just not going to be there. Okay, so all of that said, Donna, you had your hand up a second. Oh, I just wanted to clarify that the grace period didn't come from the floor. It was on the warning when we first set it up. I'm pretty, no, I'm pretty sure. I know. No, because Donna was, I was the treasurer. Donna was, yeah, was, was, was in the office then, and she said, It doesn't really matter. I'm just, I'm just clarifying yeah. that it was she on was the right. warning. It didn't come okay. up before. Because right. she, she was the treasurer. Okay, so we had a grace period. We Maybe had, that, it was a penalty reduction. I think that was a penalty reduction. Penalty reduction definitely came from the floor. That's right, because I remember Leslie Fitch said, spoke to that. If you reduce the penalty, um, I'm resigning. And, it and came then they reduced the, the penalty, too. and I think she resigned. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, I just want to say I remember that conversation as well. I don't know when it was, but it was very emotional. And so I think, John, you're you're really on point in saying it's me need to be defended on the, the floor because people yeah. were very, you know, emotional about the. You know, people struggling to pay their taxes on time and, right. and all of that. So and I think that's it was a it was a, it was a strong that was, conversation. That was, yes. that was where it originally it was discussed. Yes. Well, that was more the penalty itself, though. Mm -hmm. I know if if the penalty came from if only the penalty came from the floor, then it was because the grace period is just around the issue of somebody getting penalized because they are 36 hours late um, walking in the door while that same, while the, the mailbox is full of taxes just arriving. That sort of oh, but oddity. It's emotional. Okay. Yes. Well, and it's just pointing out, this is an emotional issue. And, 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 right. I, and, and from personal experience, I have a friend who's been in the hospital for several weeks, and I happened to remember that she needed to pay her property taxes. Oh, and if I hadn't made it that day, I think I made it on time, but if I hadn't and it was the next day, she would have had to have paid that penalty. Right. Or, or request 
or requesting yeah. abatement, but you know, somebody's in the hospital or right. Well, you know, there's, there is the abatement thing. I mean, we got yeah. into trouble, right? And it was only because Jan happened to mention to us that we were in, we had no idea that, that there was a problem of delivery. But it would have been, if worse come to worse, we could have made our case before right. abatement. Right. So, well, and no matter when you do it, so there's I'm always not, I'm a deadline. I'm not opposed deadline. to making this change. I just want to point out yeah, yeah. Right. that, you know, there are circumstances where. Sure. Well, I'm not sure in a lot of the circumstances if one week changes anything. I think once you get through the deadline, um, there's actually, it kind of eases up because then the delinquent tax collector can make a payment plan with you. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of folks who are kind of perennial, have a really hard time mm -hmm. getting it together. And so yeah, some with those people. folks, um, there has been a concerted effort to not officially have a payment plan, but we do have folks who I get a $105 check every month and we just kind of stick it in TA and it's just accruing so that when you get to that first payment, at least that first payment is there mm -hmm. for them. Um, for those folks who don't like, <coughs> Like we use an escrow service, we just pay it as a part of our mortgage, and then I don't have to think about it. But not everybody has a mortgage, not everybody wants to escrow and do all that. And so, you know, I think for the folks that are more perennially having a really hard time making ends meet, um, those are those are candidates to try to reach out to and just say, hey, we've noticed that this has been going on for a while. Can we try to right. work something out? Um, you know, so that you don't get into the situation because, of course, once we vote on the delinquent penalties and all that stuff, we have to charge those because that's been, you know, decided by the voters. Right. Yeah. yeah. Penalties was, that was a huge, that was a, we yeah. talked about that several times. Thank we you. We have talked about it often. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Um, okay, we want to move on to, we are really uh, behind, guys. Uh, okay, so we're moving on to budget update. So, uh, just... Generally, and others can chime in. We've been working on. We've had three meetings on budget. Yes. Yep, right. and we've been yeah. doing them on Saturday morning. Some of you, anybody here has come? Donna came. Jeremy's come. Um, and <coughs> we have more work to do, and we probably need to set another date. Um, I can't remember if there's anything in specific we wanted to. Say about our budget work. No, I mean, we were seeing we, one, we wanted to let people know that. Are we we're not meeting on this it. Saturday? No, we're not. Okay. No, we said we're going to take this. We're going to take. We're going to have a break. Holiday, we're going to have a holiday Go break. Go to the beach. Yeah. Okay. Holiday break. Yeah. Well, we um, have other things we have to work on, but we're not going to meet on the on the. The other thing, what we heard on Saturday, we heard requests from <clears throat> planning, DRB, conservation. We got Jeremy's town office. Request, mm -hmm. you know, we're I think we're in pretty good, mm -hmm. pretty good shape. We're getting there. Putting, we're getting there. Yeah. Start putting numbers in, and then what we do, we get everybody's wish list, their dream of what they'd like to have, and then we plug the numbers in and look at the reality. Well, we look at the business case, right? And you know, not every you know not every request can be fully consumed by the you know in the budget. So right. And we don't we don't have a sense yet. We have literally not well, we don't even have numbers in some of the boxes. Right. So we don't have a sense yet of when all the numbers go <laughs> in, what is what is that delta over this year's budget? Um, and there will be a delta over this year's budget. But then we say, okay, um, is that a reasonable increase and a reasonable overall budget. A reasonable overall budget, and and if we and, and we do we've done this every year, and if we don't feel that it's a reasonable overall, then we get a sharper pencil and go back in and look at, you know, the budget lines and and try to whittle it down to something that either is reasonable or at, is as tight a budget as we can justify and still run the town. Right, with because you know the bottom line is it affects the taxpayers, right? And especially the ones who are struggling, right? And we have to run the town, so that's the balance. Anything else, folks, want to add? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving mm -hmm. on to the town meeting discussion item. Mm -hmm. Is this a this is a, this is a discussion item? Not a discussion. Right, right. Uh, um, this is a right. Yes, I think we said, I had some notes last time, we had, we just said we were going to decide this on the 19th. We are going to dis vote oh, next week. Right. Yeah. 
So tonight is a, is a further discussion. Further discussion. Why don't we start with, why don't we just do a quick, we've discussed it once or twice already. So I'm just going to say, let's go around the, the table here and get a gut. Well, I'll start with Rick. Rick. Gut. Gut on what, what you would do. If, it, if you had the magic wand, how would you run town meeting this year? Would you do a town meeting in the, in the town hall or in the school, everybody in the person? Would you do 100% in Zoom or would you, with an informational meeting, an informational meeting on Zoom or would you do, well, what would you? You know, basically, my real, gut, my gut desire would be to do a town hall type meeting here. But given what I'm hearing about RSV and these, I, COVID, I, COVID you know, I still have real hesitation. There's some real serious threats out there. I mean, I'm seeing people come down with, you know, serious lung issues and young and old. So I'm still, I, I don't know how to answer that because we don't really know. So we have to, we're going to vote next week. So be thinking about it. Denise, I will. Yeah. do you have a gut? I mean, I thoroughly support us having a full-blown town meeting at the school, at here, wherever. But I am very concerned. I think I mentioned this last time we talked about it. The reports are that we are going to have a huge crisis with COVID, RSV, even the flu, come next spring. And you know, from winter into <coughs> spring. What we did last year was we did Zoom informational. We did some um, with some of us being here at the town hall. You know, so some could be in person, right? So some could be in person, and some was on Zoom for the informational for the informational mm -hmm. meeting, and then everything else was voted on 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 the ballot. But it wasn't a town meeting. It wasn't. No, it was only informational. That's right. So everything, so yeah. everything had to be voted on by ballot. I mean, the beauty of town meeting is you get to discuss it. You know, you can make changes. Um, but I am very concerned about this coming season and what all this is going to bring. Okay. John? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing what everyone's saying, um, an anecdote. Um, a good friend, um, a good friend's brother-in-law, she married an older guy, he's 75 <coughs> years of age, lives in New Hampshire, He's had a heart condition, has had heart surgery in the last decade. And he ended up with some kind of serious ailment with his leg. And he lived near Dartmouth. And like real serious, particularly for his age, because of his heart and because of what was going on. And called Dartmouth and they were not accepting any patients. This is two weeks ago. Um, and things continue to crescendo. He, they, he called all the hospitals, he called down in Concord, I guess there's one there, called all over. None of the hospitals could take him. His wife fortunately had his heart doctor's cell phone and called him and he was on vacation and he called his partner who reached out to him and said, just meet me, bring your husband to Dartmouth, meet me in the foyer, I'll get him in. If he didn't have that cell phone number, in that connection, he wouldn't have, been, in that connection, he right. wouldn't have been at shoehorned in. Mm -hmm. So the reason I tell you all that is I feel like beyond us and our immediate family here in Calais, I think we have a broader obligation to not overwhelm or do anything that might just exacerbate what's going on and what will be going on in the hospitals with Sorry. their limited resources. Everything we're hearing is that it's gonna be a bad one this winter um, because of the three elements that are out there, the flu, COVID, and that RSV. RSV, yeah, RSV. now RSV will it's just not just kids now. So it may be, I, I would not wanna be, feel like having on my conscience that people got sick at our town meeting and we were, uh, vector and then people couldn't get to the hospital and people you know god forbid got super ill 
damaged health and, or died. So I think we got to proceed with caution. I, 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 I think, I don't know if we can warn a hybrid or maybe we should just now proceed. It's already bad enough. Maybe we just do Zoom remote. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I still feel like we need to have the pre-meeting um, in-person opportunity. There'll be candidates running for Mark in my position. I think mm -hmm. folks who don't have um, Zoom, Zoom mm -hmm. or computers or for whatever reason, and you want to you know, explain who they are and why they're running. Um, I just think that was a fair thing to do. So hang on, Jeremy. I see you. Um, I don't know what happened to our... Well, the things here, they yeah. disappeared, but... That could be replicated. Yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is... Do it like we did last year. Do it year. like we did last year. The inform So this, what that means, folks, is, is, right, the informational meeting was Zoom. was on Zoom. It was a couple weeks before. There was some timing. We had yeah, to the thread and needle around timing. Yeah. Mark, we had, yeah, we did a Zoom informational. And then we also had it available here. People could come yeah, here, but it was in real time. It wasn't asynchronous. Yeah. yeah. And then the rest was, it was Australian ballot. That's right. And that's why we did the informational person. Right. That's so right. So if people didn't have a computer, they could still How show well up and learn. was the informational period? We had a, not, not at that attendance level that was a concern, I think, spreading infection, but we probably, I don't know. Had, well, well, you mean in person. Including Zoom. In person, there were, were I wasn't here. I was actually. I, I think there were a I, lot of people there, on Zoom. Like, a lot on Zoom. I, and there I were in person, 10, 12 back. people. Yeah, I'd have to go back. 25. Back. It wasn't and, as big as the year before. That well, was all Zoom. <laughs> no, it right, wasn't. no, it wasn't all Zoom. Um, you know, obviously, town meeting attendance might be way less if you did it town meeting in person. That's true. You know, everything that's going on, there's a lot of people that have health issues. Or they have a family member that has a health issue or a child. Right. And also, you know, what I'm hearing is women who get COVID more than once have a higher risk of having long-term effects with heart or respiratory or anything like that. Okay, so I'm sorry. So, I, I so want to make sure, if, when you're done, I want to make sure we let Mark So just understand, well, Mark's really on the floor, but if we do, if we do this, we'll be doing this. What I'm suggesting, we'd be doing an Australian ballot, and the concern, like Jeremy's requested amendment um, to the, the warning, warning um, would be less of a concern. You couldn't amend it from the floor. You can't amend the budget from the floor. Mm -hmm. It locks everyone in, mm -hmm. FYI. So mm -hmm. there's somewhat of a loss of yeah. public engagement. Yeah. And we, we basically represent you fully. And you get an upper but down. What's, but as you said, I would not want us to have a full blown town meeting. Yeah, and then, and then we're one of these sites that they say was a super spreader. But right. let, okay, let's hear what Mark has to say. Well, I'd like to start with a question. <clears throat> I take it, am I right, we do not have the capability of having a hybrid town meeting. We that don't. is an in person town meeting with a camera that focuses on people and a way of counting votes on Zoom. I, no. I would, I mean, Mm, our what we don't have that yeah. the, I don't even think the technology that. is that little owl yeah that's the best good. technology we, we have, have. Yeah. I don't I don't think we can I don't think that's even legal I have to double check but I don't think that a, a full a full to to be able to have some people voting in person and some people <clears> voting on Zoom I would want us to really yeah, check that point. out I don't think you can I don't think that's legal not do you care you. do you Very care strongly right enough right. about that that we actually go and research and because it's, it's two things it's it's figuring out whether we can do it and then it's, it's it, the logistics of that so the only do, way to do it if it's legal is to have it curated by a person so that every time if you have a hybrid meeting and you want the zoom people to be able to hear and understand you have to spend the money to have someone like that zoom in on them when they talk like someone in the floor is talking, mm -hmm. and there's a microphone, etc. And there's a done, but you're not prepared. And to it's do a, it. and, the, and the visual. I mean, that's why you have a camera. Well, and so then the counting the votes, in. right? Counting the but votes for those on Zoom, I think takes time. Is going to be really time consuming. Well, the reason I ask, and I'll tell you my hesitation. I think we're permanently in this condition, and that what you're really saying is goodbye town meeting. And I don't feel very good about that. I, don't I think that this is happening. I mean, there's. I just read today that they're 
Right now, rates of, uh, I mean, RSV is the problem, he said. Right now, Vermont is one of the states with the lowest for now. Uh, for now. But there are two variants, and they're worried about them. Well, next year, I think it'll be the same. I agree. And I'm worried. I'm just worried. I don't know. I personally think if we do it this next year the way that we did last year, if we want to preserve town meeting, then we spend the money to do the true hybrid meeting, and we count, we figure out whether it's legal. If it isn't, we see if we can change the law, and we make it legal, and we take the time to count votes on Zoom. That wouldn't be this time, either. that would be that right. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. So that, that's, a, that's a budget proposal. Yeah, right. because, yeah. yeah. Right. because we don't, I don't, I think rather than asking Denise to go to search, research whether it's legal, from a technology standpoint, we don't have the technology. We, have we, we, we would not be in this room if we were having a... It's not for now. It's okay. for 2024. Because, I mean, people would like us to do select board meetings in that same way. That they're in person and they're Zoom. Well, the, that we could do once we have high speed internet. Right. Like, that's what I said. It's the voting. We, right, we, the problem. right. Yeah. we tried the hybrid select board meetings and we had so many problems with the internet. Remember, it would kick us off and we'd have to sign back. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not just that. I mean, we have, we have sound, it's not just the internet, we have sound issues. Um, we have, it, we have, I would say we have tech, sure, but we have, we have other, other barriers. We also have just a plain old setup barrier. Like you'd want another screen somewhere. Well, anyway. we, we would want to do what the legislature did. They fitted up the hearing rooms mm -hmm. with two cameras, mm -hmm. one facing the chair coming from the far end of the table facing toward the chair and one from actually in front of the chair facing to the back of them. So you get everything yeah. um, but okay. you know we have okay. to work on that and maybe we can put that out of so so next week next week um, next week next week we got to vote on this so okay. we we got to put this to bed because we're going to keep well, yeah, because, i can tell you then my inclination is to go with the rest of you on this but if you have some comment well no, i don't aware. want to close this i i, I want to advocate i agree with mark also um so um i i would like for us to consider putting money in the budget. I don't know, I think we discussed this last year yeah. about reaching out to whoever did the technological fixes at the legislature, because it worked great. Yeah. Um, so. Do you have yeah, a contact? Do you, do, you, do you know anyone who would be yeah, representing us? Yes. Yeah. You know who our representative that, will be? That's your to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I saw some hands. Um, Jeremy uh, Jeremy had his hand up a while ago, then Barbara, and then Larry. You guys can. Marilyn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do know that, Marilyn. <laughs> um, okay, Jeremy, you first. Come on up and join us. So, unfortunately, the law does not allow us currently to hold um, anything but a town meeting in person. Oh, the we don't even that have that hybrid option. We allowed anymore? to do that last year was the result of S172, which expires that, this true. year. Is that the same thing as S78? Prior to that, the, I don't remember yes, what, the, what the number was, but it was the same well, thing. S-172 or whatever became So that has that. a sunset any day now? <laughs> the sun, it authorizes for 2022 annual meeting only. Uh, oh. So wait, in other words... We're okay. holding a town meeting unless the legislature As, reauthorizes like that Like on the law. first day of the legislature. To and do keep it. in mind, there's one-third new members. I've had a conversation with Gwen Zakoff, who is one of the two lobbyists that work for VLCT. There is absolutely no chatter about this happening. Should they're not hearing from any towns, the only thing that they're hearing is actually reauthorizing the law that allows us to hold hybrid meetings currently um, or completely Zoom meetings. That's what they're hearing. They're not hearing from towns about this at all. I think last year it was different because. Um, the COVID was much more heightened and all of that. Um, so my concern is that we get too much further into this conversation without yep. acknowledging the reality that, that this might not even be possible. So, so mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. So you're saying that the way that the law is now, we can't do an informational Zoom even. So one, S-172 was what allowed um, on a temporary basis for municipalities to um, apply 
the Australian ballot system to what is normally um, a, town a town meeting. And of course, the only way to change town meeting to full Australian ballot, as we have for some of the other things, is by actually having it's vote. Right. Right. And that would be a vote in person also. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Well, that's. You can't put, you, you can't, I don't think. Right. Yeah. I guess that answers right. the question. All right. right. So this conversation is, is moved. That's why I was trying to. Um, I, didn't, well, I, I didn't know that you guys had had the conversation previously. Or yeah. Like, we've kept it, we've but. put it up. For discussion a couple of times so good it was moot good to know right. but but I do want to say that I wouldn't be surprised if there's starting to be some chatter and the legislature mm -hmm. might act pretty quickly and so um, maybe what we don't so we want to at least be aware of the conversation right. because well, um, well we may have that opportunity the, that we other, don't have right the other now. thing I would say is that if it's something that is important to you, to you all. I would reach out to the LCT and their advocacy team mm -hmm. yep. and let them know. Okay. Yeah, Gwen um, and um, Karen. Karen, Karen Horn. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I mean, I, 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 I. And if and if Mark ends up on GovOps or something like that, then we got an ace in the hole. But other than that. Well, so I want to I want to speak to the issue substantively because we might have a chance to vote it fully. Um, if the legislature changes. And what I, I find the point of losing town meeting very compelling. I love town meeting and I love, I, I, I know Barbara, <coughs> sorry, and yeah, Marilyn does too. Um, I, I love that, I, I love that we have, you know, we, we have good discussion. That's where people, it's, there's so many things that are great about it. I don't have to catalog them, everybody knows. Um, but the point that John made is also very. I can speak to that. Well, Marilyn, can yeah, I, how about you let me finish first, and then I'll and then I will call you. So I find it very compelling that we that if if the healthcare system is becoming overwhelmed, that's also a civic responsibility that we have to pay attention to. So I feel that's a compelling point. I'm. We don't have to decide now. Marilyn, let's go ahead and make your comment. You want to come up and speak to us here? Please come to the table. No, no, no. Please come to the table. We invite everybody to do that so that we can hear you better. Um, uh, having a bit of a medical background, I followed closely during COVID all the virologists and their talk and what, you know, and how, how, this, how these uh, respiratory infections are passed and so forth and so on. If, you, if one does not want to get a respiratory infection, one wears a mask. No problem. You do mm -hmm. not get that infection if you wear a mask. Not necessarily. Even if somebody else in the room has that infection. It's actually not, not that's true. That's not actually not true. I, I have read the medical news. I know something about medicine. And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. if you wear a mask, you're not getting well, sick. If you wear a surgical mask, you are not getting Regardless if we're forced, either we decide or we are forced into an in-person meeting, mm -hmm. we have the power to say yes to the Well, request. that's a question. Right. I'm actually I don't sure know we do, we do that. Well, even if you don't, if anyone is worried about, you can certainly make the point that if anybody is worried about getting COVID or any other kind of infection, they need to wear an N95 mask. We can certainly, even if we can't require it, we, we can, can, we can recommend. There was a period where we, I don't know, but we, well, we also can model. So if we, <laughs> if we are required to be in person, we can all, and that all is everybody in the room here, we wear can all wear masks and set a culture and a tone of we're wearing masks here. I would be happy to wear I'm masks. sure, yeah, I would too. So, all right, so this is a good discussion. I appreciate uh, Jeremy. I'm really glad you were here to let us know Larry, that we were. Larry, yeah, Larry. and Larry, you want to add? Come on up. Just, just a, a brief um, addition, uh, essentially to follow Mark's um, lead, but perhaps with a little. Um, speak, up, <coughs> speak up, sweetie. Uh, perhaps with a little Thank unavoidable you. emotion that behind it. I, I fear, I really fear. This casual, not casual, wrong word, this even studied um, predisposition to, to jump the traditional town meetings. And I, I'm not questioning your, you know, your, your sincerity and all, but I'm just worried about something is going to die, and that's going to be local democracy in Vermont. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and and I, it's, yeah. it's, I've lived a lot of places in my life, and I'm telling you, 
this is the best place I've ever lived uh, for, um, for, for local government uh, enacting legislation and the townspeople accepting it because everybody was there. And everybody who wanted to talk did talk. And everybody who thought that the, that the, the budget was screwed up could do something about it that day. Yeah, that's all, all gone. To each other. That's yeah. all gone with this, with this um, uh, whatever it is, where you have the, an informational session, but, you, but you're, you're just having an Australian battle. Right. I, I really, really, really hope you can find and see your way through to reestablishing the town mm -hmm. meeting. And I think doing it uh, at the school, David <laughs> Sheets will kill me for saying this, but I think doing it at the school would, would be an even better environment than doing it here because it's bigger, it's airier, and if you need to do something with the internet, I'm suspecting they've got a good internet system here uh, as opposed to what we have out here in the town hall. So please don't, just don't get the mindset that we have to do this and, and cancel town meeting again. Try really hard not to if you can. No, I don't disagree how important town meeting is. I've been going to town meeting for decades. I just know being somebody who is very conscious of people with health concerns and conditions, that it could be deadly. Well, and, and wearing a mask is not going to 100% protect it. So I'm going to, I think everybody has said what they want to say and we we could discuss for a, a lot longer and it's 10 of 9 and we have other things that we want to do too um, i'm going to ask uh do we need to review the arpa fund requests or can we maybe do that at a budget meeting Denise? no let's do that at a budget meeting i'll yeah. get an update with Rini's recent request for the okay. east Calus fire district yeah. Yeah. yeah i've got an opinion about that okay so but we're going to save this for a budget yep. whatever the next budget yep. meeting is uh, Rick, do you have a roads report? Yeah, I apologize. I didn't get to write out a formal report to you. Yeah, you only, to... we only warned you for five minutes, and that was That's for 20 perfect. minutes ago. We basically, <laughs> right now, we've kind of switched into winter roads. We actually <clears> just <throat> did a repair up on Foster Hill for a ditch that was washing out. It's been very tricky because we've had this really warm weather. We've had all this mm. mud season-like conditions. Mud yeah, it's, weird, it's real concern for us because we makes plowing very, very difficult yeah. with, mm -hmm. without frozen roads. And it also makes them really unstable. You can see rutting out there. Yeah. And you can't really fix that, you know, but that's the problem this time of year. So, but it looks like it's stabilizing now. It's cooling down. Uh, we've had, we've also, um, yeah, so the, the guy, they've got, obviously got all the equipment up and basically running and we've had uh, they've been putting the wings on the graders we don't need that yet we we'll need that once snow banks build up uh, to be able to push those back so the snow doesn't roll back and under the vehicles we're having to tool up it turns out kind of one of the things that's turned up now there there were almost no tools in the shop we're actually having the guys go out they were bringing in their own home tools to work on the equipment and this actually saves, they do a lot of repairs themselves on this, where we can do it, we don't send this out to repair shops. It not only takes weeks to, you know, we've got to get it to those places, and then it might take weeks to get them to work on it. But it's also very, very expensive. So we're retooling right now, letting the guys take the lead on this. We're looking at, you know, possibly if we can afford to do this, upgrade some of the dwelling equipment. So that we can better do repairs. And, uh, so, yeah, that's on the shop side of things. And that's the shop hand tools, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked that they didn't have. Yeah, you know, we don't basics. know, and we don't know yeah, what happened to them. We don't know. They just disappeared. So, um, we've had a number of trees down. I've gone out myself <laughs> uh, at least two or three occasions already on at night with because Peter. The road crew go out. I always make sure that they're not alone. I'll go out, work with them. You know, we've had, and that's actually probably a good thing because it's been, the wind we've had. At least it's not in really slippery conditions. So you know, that's taking out some of these weaker trees. The guys have been trying to get those. They actually spend a fair amount of time trying to get down these hazard trees that are 
that are blocking, uh, you know, that are uh, potential issues. So, but we never get them all. There are probably thousands of them. We've had a. The, there's been a little bit of something's turned up. We had to clear two beaver dams in town that were potential threats right against uh, roads. You know, that where if a, be a beaver dam is somewhat like a real dam failure. Imagine Curtis Pond. And these things can impound huge amounts of water. And if they fail, there is, you've got potentially acres of water and it will wipe out, yeah, it can really wipe out roads and do downstream damage. So we watch these. We do not, we're very careful about what we take out and what we don't. We really try to avoid, to, you know, assess risk. We're going to be putting a lot more work into that because we've had some uh, complaints about that because it's, it really is probably a death sentence for the beavers and I'm not laughing at that. You know, because at this point they've got their winter storage of food and their lodge is submerged to the point where, you know, all of a sudden you drain it out and that's, that's, kind of, that's not very good for them, the outcome. And, you know, we're looking at different scenarios, you know, we had talked about possibly trying to do this early in the year, but that's no good because the beavers actually rebuild the dams. We've got dams we've put in and taken out four times and they're back. Even with one was taken out in September and it, so it's, it's back in place. So well, we're trying to do some research a little bit on this and, and, uh, and you know, come up with a better policy around it. But anyway, with something we've just done in the past, but we're going to try to explore to see what other, you know, what's being done out there to see if there's something humane and... We have a leave of this year. You, yeah. yeah, well... Because, our, because of our... our Sure. The way you get to our house, you have to cross over a bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, you know, it's tricky because we can. I don't know. Also, you mean there's a dam there now? Uh, and there? They, they, would, we, they would build dams, and we yeah. were afraid that, that the, the, uh, uh, our driver was going to be flooded. And we'd pull out all the stuff. Oh, the feet right back. They just come back and we built it. Yeah, oh, same yeah. thing as Curtis Pond. And now we have beaver. The beaver, beaver baffles. Yeah, it's tricky. It, but they, you know, and it's. it's uh, a lot of trouble we have too is that our roads can really be impacted by the beaver dams that are out of the right of way. We've got one, in fact, that we don't have to get property owner permission to go in to run an excavator across the land and take it out because those, you know, that, they literally will blow culverts right out of the ground and take a road. I mean, I've taken it's, 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 yeah, they, they can be very serious. So, you know, we're trying to figure out a protocol for determining, I mean, we don't want to do that. I mean, I, the best scenario with things like that is if if beavers work an area until they've depleted the food supply and then they move, and the, the dams then become particularly problematic because the beavers are repairing dams when they're active, but they're not when they move on, and so it's rotting away, and those things cut loose, and they, you know, that, so that, but that's a time, you know, that's something that may offer us some opportunities to be more, you know, proactive and preventative. So, but we'll, we're kind of in the early stages of figuring that out. Let me see. But, uh, yeah, the, um, uh, other than that, we're still trying to find the, you know, trying to get this DP Dub Director of Public Works position nailed down. Um, and I think we're still waiting for some parts for our, our electronic uh, speed signs. We've got the signs themselves. I'm waiting for some bases that have, they didn't come. We've supply chain issues, so we're waiting to, you know, receive those. As soon as we have them, we actually have three bases in place right now. We're going to be putting, as soon as we get the base place to have these. Do we have a, a date? I don't know. I can't. By which they're not even, the they're not even say, no, it's a supply so chain thing. I've like contacted Eric down. Wolf, and, yeah, I've got to yeah, follow up again, because I haven't, yeah, he knows, and he's trying to get them, so. I don't okay. have a date, so, uh, but as soon as we get those, we can actually put them in place and start using them, and then, uh, yeah, so, and I think that's going to help some of, some of these speed pro problems around town, mm -hmm. and we can actually see what vehicles are actually doing in terms of speed, we'll find out, 
you know, because they do count, they measure speed of vehicles too. And, and Can you move on to the sole source? You know, the yeah, we have an item. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's it's a. Yeah, it's me. It's a U item, but yeah, we have to I, vote on this one. Do you have a proposal? No, I'm or sorry. Do you have a motion? Uh, a motion. Yeah, my, my motion was to sole source, to be able to sole source the engineering for the east for the so, east palace bridge with the Wolf Engineering. So your so your motion is to sole source, like it says here on the agenda. Meaning the not to put out to bid. Right. Right. Based, right. We've and got based a proposal on based on a proposal. Okay, so that's the motion. Mm -hmm. The motion is for a, a sole source contract with the Wolf Engineering for the Moscow Woods okay, and Rick made the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Is there rich? And it's a repair, it's not a full replacement. No, this is a repair. It's a tear, okay. and it's temporary. And what this so is for, that. it is for the engineering design, yep. so that the reason we're very time pressured on this, we need to kind of get the engineering done on this so we can get it out to bid. And we would like them to, you know, well, do both the engineering, engineering and possibly you know, the kind of the the bid management piece as well. So and by authorizing this, we're saying that we can sole source if the motion passes. Right. And then you would bring back the contract. That's right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But what's I, the rationale I, for sole source under, time, under our purchasing policy? The reason is time. Time. Because it's we, professional. It's, it's several. It's time. Right. It's professional. It's it's professional services of a specialized nature mm -hmm. and it's almost an emergency. So it is an emergency. It's a it's an emergency. And so yeah. I think under several at least two of the criteria in the statute this would set clear of the policy. Of the, the, yeah. Policy. Yeah. Yeah. the specialized service time, specialized services of a professional nature yeah. and mm -hmm. almost an emergency because yeah. given the nature of the bridge. Well mm -hmm. and right and getting it on the uh, radar of the engineering company to be able to do it next exactly. spring. Well, we want to get it out as fast as we can because this is this repair will cost somewhere between 80 and say $130,000. And that's the, actually a low dollar amount. What will the engineering study cost? Uh, I'm working off the top of my head right now. I think I gave you copies of the report at our last meeting. Yeah. Right? I, it's, I think eight, uh, roughly eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then there was also some supplemental costs. For right, and then we're also management. we're we're applying for a grant. Yeah, eight, a, a eight, structures eight grant, right? which yeah, which we've received, but we've got to you know got to follow up. I saw it. Well, that's and that's part of the urgency piece is that we have received a grant, a structures okay. grant for a structures, a structures grant. So everything is like situated to go. Um, and we just didn't know about this sooner. It's eight to ten thousand. We've articulated why sole source, which is important yeah, because have, of a purchasing policy. Yeah, you know, there are two pieces to the to the proposal. One is kind of the actual engineering, and then one is the grant the grant management. And they all do the grant management. Well, I mean not the grant management, but the uh, bid management piece. Right. They they help us put out. Oh, the, and bid management. Okay, so the motion so really the is. will do the biz. Bid management, the sole source and of the engineering design and the bid management oh, that's it, yes, that's for the three reasons we said. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No. Nope. Um, you got the motions and who made them, Denise? Mm -hmm. And the rationale under the policy? Yep. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> Sharon, may I say something quick, quickly before we leave? Sure. I just really want to commend Mark and John, for your service. Thank you. I feel like you should have a round of applause. I know. We are how many people. Thank you. I know you both devoted a lot of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. Yes, absolutely. Guys. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Oh, thanks. So I think the thing we wanted to just report out for our our own meeting record is that we had a lot of good conversation about Very good. Um, how how to provide incentive for callous residents, which is what we can reasonably influence, um, to volunteer on the fire fire crew and the and the yeah. ambulance squad. Yeah. And Woodbury, um, and, and Woodbury and Woodbury and East Montpelier. 
And what we hit on is what you heard Saturday at the budget meeting. Um, and Sage Kennedy has volunteered to help us with that project. So what we want to do is essentially, there's detail that goes under, under this, but in some fashion, match with what is a humble stipend is our, our understanding. Right. Um, I don't know what I don't know what the stipends are. That's part of what. Right. It's not Sage is going to do the research on. It's not matching the stipend. No, it's it using the same model. Right, it would, be, it would be using the same criteria that the fire department and EMS use to give the members a, an annual okay. stipend. They have to go to 50% of um, the meetings and 50% of the training. So they have some really good criteria. Now, something I want to bring up that I didn't think about. For until, our people. Right, they would be callous people serving in those capacities in either East Montpelier right. or Woodbury. The only thing I didn't think of at the time was what about people that maybe live on the edges of East Montpelier in Montpelier or live in Plainfield. But we're talking only we're about Calus. Right. But that was that was something I thought of is you know it'll be great for Calus to do this for people. So you know it's a model for other towns right. to maybe follow to help right. with making this happen. So it's a much simpler answer than what we at one point had floated as a reduction in property taxes and we realized, well, money is money and so there's a much easier way. And it's not match, I take that back. It's, it's coming up with some acknowledgement financially um, that uses the same criteria for who, or for who gets it and it's callous residents. So right. let's- Is this a budget line? Uh, it would be. Well, it would be, but, it, but if it's, it's wouldn't be very big, and if it's no. too big that we can't afford it this year, then it's too big. So we, there's no and reason we couldn't come up with a number. We might not be able to do it this year, but at least it's in the works. We'd I'm create a we fund. Can. We'd well, create a fund in anticipation of it. Yeah. Well, I yeah. certainly think we budget for it next year. But even if it's a fraction of what we would like to do, we could do it this year. We could year. do something. We, we could, could do something. Kind of a grand in there, you know. Yeah, we could do something. And so, and Sage is working on well, research Sage, and Sage is looking and the photos, getting right. photos. Photos and how many people actually yes. serve on right. Woodbury and East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. That'll help us to be able to come up with a figure, I think. Right. right. And it, you know, it's just, it's a acknowledgement. It's, you know, they put in so much. We think we put in a lot of time. They put in way more. You know, for is, is yeah. the thing to Poir, Paul Blair. Blair. Is he new? No. No, no he's been the chief. No. no. Is he the he's chief? just been on there. No, no, he's no. Just really Ty, not. Ty Rowland was the chief. Larry Brown took over for Ty. Oh, um, Larry's resigning. Right. And then Paul Guerre was the assistant. No, what's his name? Albert P Petrelli was the assistant chief. So he'll now have to fill in temporarily as chief. Um, Paul Guerre is vice president and Toby Talbot is still president. Of oh, oh, the board. Of oh, the board. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Okay. I like him. I thought he's, he's very he's good. Really, yeah. He's very good. He was, he's very he good. Strange, yeah. It was one of the best conversations we've had in the fire department in yes. all my history. I, I, with them. I do think that, because I can't imagine it's very many callous people right now. I, I said mm. like two that she could think of. In Wood, Wood, Woodbury? No. For everything? No, in Callis. Callis for Woodbury or East Montpelier? No, two Callis residents serving in East Montpelier. Right, but oh. there's Woodbury too. But so she was going to so Tony being one and then somebody else. Right. Okay, so I think we should do it this year at whatever level yeah, we can. Right, right. It's right. got to start somewhere. Right, okay, so that's what we wanted to say. Uh, maybe when we have some conversation about bonuses. Maybe we can assign Rick to being a firefighter as part of his select board duties. Uh, okay, let's move on. We've had, um, we've carried junk ordinance. Uh, Denise reminded me since uh, John, remember the junk literally ordinance? eight years ago. It was like uh, Jeff. It was Jeff Rubin from Farmhouse Cafe. Remember with the junk cars across 14? Well, in more recent, no, 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 no. more recently, yeah. there's been a request from a resident on Lightning Ridge whose neighbor collects things. Um, but even so. We carry it there. Um, I want to. I just keep looking at it, thinking seriously, are we going to get to this? So the choices are: take it off, or leave well, it. I mean, leave it, it there. It could and be a simple thing. Right Why don't we, before we get 
bur buried in yet another work, large work effort, why don't we just draft a letter from the select board to the Agency of Natural Resources Salvage Yard Program? Um, you want to do that? Yeah, I'll do that. What's it going to say? We request that you, if there's an identified property, that you go out and inspect this property for compliance with the state statute governing the operation or management of junk vehicles or something. Okay. Do you want to draft such a thing? Sure. When do you want to be on the agenda? 19. Okay. What is it he's doing? Whatever it is. Letting the heat out. Uh, my wife does that dress me crazy. It's not, it's not summer anymore. Close that freaking pneumonia oh. hole. Okay, so. Oh, my dad. Okay. Just like my wife. Close the damn okay, door. Come on, freaking, I can feel it here. Let's move on. Let's start. Let's start. Um, can, I, I would like a motion for the, from the Cold board. Battery. I would like a motion from the board oh, to God. authorize Sharon and Denise to work on job description, we put public works director, treasurer, business manager, really it's explored, exploring uh, opening up a town administrator. Yeah, yeah. Mark made the motion, is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 It, worked. Okay. it worked when I was coming here, it worked. Your car is inside? Well, the remote. Time the batteries and connections. Oh, that's well, why. You wrap it on the table remember. sometimes. Oh, well, it worked when I was on my way here. Oh, the other thing is you put it under your chin. No kidding, it makes your body an antenna. I'm serious. Oh. Works every time. Yeah, right. I'm not. Oh, I'm dead serious. Then do it. I don't know which button it is. This one. That starts it. Watch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, one of them. So, coming up business. We have um, Curtis Pond planning probably an executive session on the 19th. Uh, Stephanie and Denise. Is that on. with? Is this the one with Jeff Tucker? Yes. Well, oh, and it's there, there and 20 But that won't be an executive session. Well, <coughs> no, but the other, there's another thing. We, we might talk about something else in executive session. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. Okay. And then we have 20 minutes with Du Bois and King Jeff Tucker. Yeah. Um, Stephanie and I are not going to, so I talked to Stephanie, and we're going to defer this until January. <coughs> okay, so maybe. So we can just put down January 2023. Um, and I'm going to say the second meeting because the first meeting is going to be full of mm -hmm. town meeting stuff. Um, I would love a volunteer to make calls about people who need to be reappointed. And Barbara favorite. and I are working on that. You are? Barbara and I are working on it. Okay. Um, I think we'll be ready to give something at the 19th. Maybe. Probably not. The, I don't know about the 19th. Maybe. Okay. Um, of people who are actually ready to be reappointed, who are due who are this re year. Reappointed, or the positions need to be filled. We're working on that. Can I make a request when you're asking them if they would be reappointed in 2022, to the extent that it's a one year? If they would do it in 23. Well, can we reappoint them in March? That's, well, that's when we would reappoint them, is after March meeting. But what I'm well, but that's not been our practice. Our practice well, it has been, been, and we just got off track. Well, right. So, but we don't want to have to call them back in, in March. We want to just reappoint. Right. Them no, March. we want them to say them to say they'll finish out this year, and that we can reappoint them for twenty twenty three. Yes. Okay. Um, traffic control ordinance. You asked for that on the nineteenth. Are mm -hmm. you still good with that? I I, I saw some email, so I know you want. Yeah. So I uh, searched the town website for the ordinance, and there is no ordinance. I said current one on the website. Right. Um, and then I did an email search, and I found the one that Denise found, and it seems that we, we actually it. had it. Yeah, we dropped it. So, no, I'm. I'm so it I'm was actually it. Re my understanding was referred to Toby because he had right. some and there were lots of smithing to do, and then that got lost. And it was on the agenda over and over and over and right. over and so, eventually. Right. And then, so right, um, it never got done by the person who was going to. Right. Yeah. So whatever's on the website is the most current official one. I, there's I, nothing on there. So, so. Should we, John, should we be putting the one that we're going to read? There should yeah. always be an ordinance on the there website. There was an old one. I the one that we're revising is an existing one. Right, right. And so that one said, should be on the website. And it's not. Well, okay. okay. So, All right. so we can make that happen, but if we're yeah. going to revise it. You should still put the current one on. We yeah. should put the current one on. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, which so is like 27 the other thing that I noticed when I was going through the October minutes is that we in October we met with Neil Maker. We had our hearing on the tree plan, and mm -hmm. we said we would renew that or endorse it or whatever if we hadn't heard anything by December. And um, the, I said. I think we need to have a fuller discussion on that. I know Dan Singleton raised concerns, and I've, I've had okay. people contact me. And All right, and the Conservation Commission, it. it was on their agenda recently, but I don't know what they talked about. Yeah. I couldn't go to the meeting. Did you go? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to oh. I'm going to put it on next. Um, <laughs> I am going to put the tree shade plan next steps. Um, for discussion mm -hmm. at the next meeting, so we don't the drop 19th. it. Yep, it just got dropped. Well, it's just discussion. Yeah, right. just just to have it. Right, right. Let's keep it alive. We should put it on as something we need to do. I think the 19th is going to get pretty full. I just don't want to lose it. I mean, no, I don't want to lose it, but I'm just saying that's at least a chance for people to see that it's worn, and and for people to say there's still concerns we need to process, mm -hmm. or we're just not going to okay. approve it. I mean, why well, would the institute get an update from Neil? Oh, are you are you going to appoint the select board resignees? We're gonna. We have to go into executive session. We have to go to have discuss. Have further discuss we whether we want you. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, should we be included? You might have to go <laughs> sit somewhere. No. We have to go out. Um, well, you in. I think we can. I'm comfortable inviting you in. Are you guys yeah, okay with inviting them in? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, um, is there a motion to go into executive session do under personnel? Are we doing employment or public office or employee? Um, it is public under officers. one. It's appointing a appointing an employee or public officer. Appoint, public. Appointing a public officer under section three one three a three. That's that's about? that's it. Is, is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. So you guys, and, uh, in, and with Mark and John included with us. Right. Okay. So we'll wait for the cameras to shut down.